Now, let's look at the hadith. The hadith says six, and let's look at nine, okay? Right. Yeah. What do the hadith, just for the record, because there's lots of people in what do the hadith say, Al Bukhari? The, the hadith says six, yep. marriage, nine consummated. Right. However, so you're saying they're wrong? The scholars weakened that hadith because the narrator lived in Iraq. And it's it's in Sahih al Bukhari. Yes, I know, but. Are you saying it's not Sahih anymore? It's been weakened. Is it Sahih? I don't know. It but is Sahih. Another point I want to make as well is. Wait, 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 no, no. Okay. We're talking about a Sahih hadith. And I want to have a conversation, not a shouting match. So I do want to. I want to give you plenty of time to talk. But let me just lay out my case. Your own hadith say that it is in Sahih, hadith, Sahih al Bukhari. That, as you've said, and as I know, that Aisha was six at the consummation and nine at the marriage. Now, what you're saying is now, in the 21st century, Muslims are weakening that Sahih Hadith. Is that your argument? Some are doing that. Others are saying that at that time, they used to count age after puberty. So let's say you hit puberty at 13 and it became 19. That means you're six years old. Okay. So this is another view that scholars have. Did Muslims say that before the modern period? This is what I've heard recent scholars say now. I don't know about scholars from before. I, I can't speak about classical scholars because I don't know. But the scholars now say that in those times, they would also count age after puberty. Yeah. So for example, I hit puberty at, let's say, 15. Yeah. That means I'm 10 years old. Can I, can I just say to you that I think that what you, you've been hoodwinked, bro, by a bunch of lies. But I've got more points to make. Wait, wait, wait. But let me just address those points. Okay. The reason why I'm saying you're being hoodwinked by a bunch of lies is for two reasons principally. Firstly, this argument that you're making is a very modern one and it is in response to the very powerful criticism that you've just heard today. That the example of your prophet, if those hadiths are true, is that it makes your prophet a paedophile. Right, now just as a question before I make point two. If those hadiths are true, that they are really, that she was actually six as we understand it, and actually nine as we understand it, would you agree with me that that does make Muhammad a paedophile? See, I can't ask that question. Why? Because it's like me saying, imagine in Christianity it says to cure everyone. Would that, does that mean you accept it? That kind of is a trap question, so I'm not going to ask that question. No, it's not a trap question. It's, it's a genuine question. question. No, it's a legitimate I'm gonna, I'm question. Gonna, I'm not going to ask that question. Okay, so you I don't want to condemn your prophet? I refuse to answer that question. Okay, he's, no, he's refusing to condemn no, his prophet. No, I refuse to answer the question. Okay. Don't put words on that. Now, next point I want to make is... Wait, I've got point two. Can I, can the, I make the next no, point? No, no, no. Okay, I'll let you make a point, then yeah. I'll make a point. Go on. Now, another reason why... Aisha was not six Tell and nine. Tell me you step away to somewhere a little quieter. It's not that loud. Yeah, no, let's go into yeah, that then corner. Then will come. No, no, it's fine. We'll have a quieter cut away from all the shouting people. But then they're going to shout there as no, well. No, no, me and you are conversation in here. That round of shouting is over. Yeah. So shouting. What's your name, bro? What's her name? Borak. Borak. Nice yeah, name. Where's that from? Borak. 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 No Borak, no, thank you. No Borak. Uh, right. That's, that's, that's better. Okay. Yes. Go on. You are so going to make the point. Ne next point as well is through the age of her sister Esma. Yeah. She was 10 years older than Aisha. Yeah. And by using events of Esma's lifetime, they calculate that um, Aisha can't have been six or nine. Yeah. She was uh, 16, 18, 21, around those ages. Yeah. So cal using calculation, it's impossible for her to be six or nine using the events of her sister. Can I reply? Yeah, oh. Before you reply. Before you reply. Oh, we're just going to change the batteries. Action. Okay. okay. So the, 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 the second point that I would make, the second point that I would make is that these, these new apologetics that are emerging from within the Muslim community, right? They're doing it because they feel the sting of the criticism that we Christians have made. So, uh, he, and that was demonstrated even by you when you couldn't answer a very simple question. I refuse to answer. Yeah, exactly. You, you refuse to answer a very simple question. And, and that shows that you feel the sting of the criticism. But the, the reason why they... The, the, but the thing that they do when they make that apologetic is that they cast Sahih al-Bukhari into doubt. Because what they're saying is Sahih al-Bukhari isn't reliable, that he got his Sahih collection wrong, that this hadith is not Sahih, and then the question arises, what other hadith are not Sahih? What we've got is a convoluted argument made by a Muslim apologist on one side, and the very clear written hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari that Bukhari says is Sahih. Now, all the Muslims in this park, and this is where I'm landing to let you reply, all the Muslims that I've debated in this park, and I've done it for six years, None of them have made your argument, except maybe one other person in six years. All the big figures, you know, 
or in, instead attempting to justify, like that woman did, when she said she wouldn't condemn paedophilia and she would agree with child marriage. All of them are instead defending Mohammed's paedophilia. Okay, now my point that I want to make is the reason why we, you say we are apolo uh, apologists is because before this <laughs> issue didn't come uh, about, you know, yeah. people were making this issue. Yeah. Now because it's become an issue, we need to clarify Yes. So that makes sense. So then now, a lot of things have changed in the 21st century. Yes. You know, you've got, you know, homosexuality, transsexuality. We know about childhood development. Uh, cigarettes. We know about childhood development. What development? We know about childhood development. Childhood development. Yeah. We, know, we know more stuff. Cryptocurrency, all these kind of things, yeah. all new things. So these kind of stuff need to be clarified now. Okay? Yes. Scholars, they need to clarify the focus was made an issue because the people who are against the prophet, peace be upon him, they use any excuse to slander him. He's a magician. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. But never yeah. they never said he's a pedophile. Why? Yeah. Why did they not use the argument that he's a pedophile? That means he wasn't a pedophile. Otherwise, they would have used it against no, him. No, hold on one second. You're you're totally wrong. Because the con the understanding that paedophilia exists is something that's only modern. In the past, Christians themselves used to marry children because they didn't understand about childhood development. Right. And this is one of the reasons why Christianity is superior to Islam. And it's one of the reasons that I would invite you to reject that paedophile Muhammad and embrace the teachings of the apostles. Because in our religion, we're told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Which means that as new issues come to our understanding, like for instance, the understanding of childhood development, we then think, what does our faith mean given this new information? And that's why Christians, even at the fifth century, had raised the age at which children could consent. So that's two centuries before Islam. And all the way through Christian history, we have been raising the age of consent. And everywhere around the world, people are rage it, rage it, uh, raising the age of consent. But as a Muslim, you're committed to the example of Muhammad because he is the perfect human being. Which means that you have two options when you're confronted with a Sahih Hadith about him marrying a six-year-old and having sex with a nine-year-old, which according to that Hadith he was. Yeah, but according to the commentary. Can we? No, no, a modern commentary, not past commentary. Yeah, but it wasn't made an issue before, so now people. So now the scholars. So now the scholars are rewriting the not tradition. Rewriting. They're rewriting the they're tradition. They're not rewriting. They're re uh, researching the yeah. sources because they have to clarify it. Yeah. And another point that I want to make as well is in Islam, we don't need to give an age of consent because. That's uh, what's subjective. So, for example, Japan is a different age, America's a different age, here's a different age. Yeah. Okay, so for example, in, in America, it's 18, isn't it? Yeah. I here it's in 16. Most, in most so states. It, here, if a 16 year old has sex, that's pedophilia, according to the Americans. Yeah. But it's not for us. In Islam, it says mental maturity and physical maturity, whether that's at 15, 18, 20, 21. A six year old is never mentally exactly, mature. Exactly, which is why she There you go. Six. Did you hear that? Exactly. So, in his heart, he is condemning Muhammad. Yeah, but never, he never married a six year old, so I'm not agreeing that. You, he you've did. got no evidence that I he didn't. The evidence. You've got an argument, yeah, an argument based on a convoluted uh, massaging of the text. Now, let me just say something. In terms of Islamic history, right, for those of us that bother to study it, what we know about the Hadith collections and about Hadith sciences is that they are consistently massaged and, and adapted from age to age. So when the Abbasids overthrew the Umayyads, there was an explosion, a plethora, of, of creating hadiths to support one position over another. In, it went between the Shia and the Sunni, a plethora of hadiths to back one position over other. In, in terms of what hadiths are considered sahih and not sahih, we can see that the early Muslims rejected the traditions about what happened to Muhammad's body after death because of Christian criticisms about those traditions and they were de subjected as being unreliable, right? And that's what Muslims are doing today. Because of Christian criticisms, they are trying to now downplay a very clear hadith that says Muhammad married a six-year-old and had sex with a nine-year-old. And they're trying to downplay it, even though for 1400 years it's been sahih, they're now trying to say it wasn't, just like in the seventh century. Well, need to clarify back then. Just like in the seventh century, Christians criticized the, the, what, the early traditions of what happened to Muhammad's body, because it was eaten by a dog and it became bloated and they left it in a house for three days. Those are all sort of pushed down to the bottom of the Hadith reliability chain because they felt the criticism of the early Christians in the 7th century. 
you know. So all the way through Islamic history, you have this invention of hadiths and this massaging of which hadiths you bring forward to sue whichever party is trying to gain dominance within the ummah. You know that Sahih al-Bukhari wasn't even... Sahih al-Bukhari Bukhari was condemned as a deviant in his own lifetime. Do you know that? The thing is, a lot of, a lot of scholars that we had before, like Ibn Taymiyyah, yeah. like Abu Hanifa, yeah. they were con condemned at the time, but later were accepted. Why? Because there was a lot of politics going on. Yes. We as humankind... Uh, That's exactly we, what I just we said. As, we as humankind can fall for our desires. Yeah. We can become corrupt. Yeah. So over money, over power, over women, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. So yes, the, some Muslim leaders were corrupt as well. But the scholars at those times, they were against those leaders. Hence why yeah. they were, you know, uh, slandered and thrown into prison. Okay. Yeah. Do, you get my, do, you, do you get my point? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So when you're a leader of a Muslim empire, you're more bound to be corrupted because you know you've got power. Okay, so that's why the scholars were deemed at that time maybe deviant, even though they weren't. And later on, we were just like for example, how uh, Van Gogh, for example, at his time he, was, he wasn't seen as a nice painter, and now yeah. everyone loves his painting. Well, I still think he's lousy. For example, but do you get my point? That's I still point. think he's rubbish. I'm not into paintings, but yeah. I'm just, just giving you that as, that as an example. Yeah. My, my, my point to you is that, and as you've just demonstrated, there's, there's two things that when you replay this video, you're going to hear back. Yeah. One is you did condemn child marriage. Of course, which didn't exist in our religion. Do, do you condemn child marriage? Of course. Which... Do you condemn paedophilia? Of course. What is paedophilia? Paedophilia is marrying uh, a, a person who has not reached a mental or physical maturity. Okay, right. And we both agree six-year-olds don't have mental maturity. 99% of the time, yes. Uh, do, and and that the nine-year-olds don't have physical maturity? Probably not. Can I just say it's 100% of the time? It's not 99.9%? It's 100% of the time. Human beings are exactly the same today as they were 1400 years ago. It is a total myth amongst Muslims that people mature differently in hot countries. It's total rubbish. It's an absolute lie. Maturity can also depend is on society. So, for example, in let's say Syria, you've got six year old kids yeah. looking after whole families, whereas, say, a six year old kid won't even have to go to the toilet properly. Right, hold on. So, so mental maturity depends upon brain function, and brain function depends upon actual brain matter. And frontal low, the frontal low is responsible for your moral judgments. These don't mature until well into puberty. So, in other words, if you haven't had puberty, you don't have the frontal lobes for moral decisions. Secondly, secondly. So that means Aisha could never be mature enough, never be mature enough to consent to marriage at six, assuming that she was six. Right, which is what your, your, your apologists claim, but your hadith say otherwise. Now, right, the other thing is, the other thing is, those frontal lobes develop late in, into mid-maturity. They're not there just because you bleed. They're there years later. You bleed first and then the frontal lobes develop. And that's why, that's why every society in the world is raising the age of consent because as we come to this realization, we realize that just because someone bleeds, they're not ready to breed.